Good morning, class eight, and welcome to your social science class. At the very onset, let me wish you all a very happy new year, two thousand twenty-one. And in this new year, let us begin today with a very new chapter, and that chapter is from your geography textbook, chapter number five, industries. So, students, today we shall begin with the chapter industries, and in this period, you all are going to. understand the meaning of the term industry then we will discuss about industry as a secondary sector activity and finally we will try to classify industries based on its various factors okay and third period is supposed to be a life class isn't it but since you all are having your pt2 examination that is why today we won't have a life class in the third period and instead you all are going to study whatever subject you have tomorrow All right. So students without further ado let us quickly begin with the learning outcome of today. So today once we are done with the discussion we will be able to define the term industry then you will be in a position to analyze industries as a secondary sector activity and then at last you will be able to compare and contrast between the various types or classifications of industry. So let us begin with the meaning of industry. So what exactly does an industry mean? Well, an industry just like agriculture refers to an economic activity and this economic activity is concerned with the production of goods, with the extraction of minerals or the provision of services. So based on these three activities, we have got iron and steel industry which is concerned with the production of goods coal mining industry which is again concerned with the extraction of coal from the earth and then we have the tourism industry or the service provider industry which is also considered as the third sector of our economy so yes what are industries industries are nothing but they are economic activities just like agriculture an industry is such an economic activity which is concerned mainly with three things number 1 it produces goods number 2 it extracts minerals and number 3 it provides services so industry is considered as a secondary sector activity So do you remember when we were discussing the chapter agriculture there we came to know that agriculture is a primary sector activity and just like that even industry is a part of our economy and which sector does it falls it it falls in the secondary sector activities so secondary activities or manufacturing so secondary activities mainly deals with manufacturing things manufacturing means production of things and how do we produce or manufacture things by changing raw materials into finished products and these finished products give more value have got more usability for the people so an example is given here pulp is changed into paper and paper into a notebook so where do we get the pulp from we get it from the wood of the trees isn't it so when we extract the pulp then this pulp is taken to the factory and it is changed into paper and this paper which is the finished products is again made into several other usable products for example we can make a notebook out of it we can make a diary out of it we can make a book out of it isn't it let us take another example cotton cloth made from cotton plant so the cotton plant which is grown by the farmers that is used to make clothes for us to wear and remember one thing that each of this stage of production so producing cotton clothes from cotton is not just a single thing to do we cannot directly convert or change cotton into clothes so it involves several stages it involves several processes and each of these processes each of these stages adds more and more value to the cotton for example when the cotton was first bought by the factory owner then it was just assume it was brought for about 1 1 kg for 100 rupees but this cotton when it is taken to the industry when it is washed properly when it is extracted using machines and all then 
that 100 rupees obviously is no more the only amount that is concerned or that is involved isn't it that 100 rupees will be adding more value to that cotton and finally when the cotton is converted into the finished product that is for example a cotton shirt in that case that shirt will have more value that means for example if 1 kg cotton was bought for 100 rupees then that cotton cloth or the cotton shirt which is the finished product from that cotton will be of more amount the price of that cotton shirt will be more and not only will the finished product have got more value but also it has got more usability than the raw material cotton plant will be useful when only when the raw material that is cotton plant is transformed from cotton to cotton thread through which we can make various cotton clothes isn't it so remember finished products have got more value and utility than the raw materials that it is made from and also remember that manufacturing or changing raw materials into finished products is not a very easy thing to do it involves a lot of manufacturing processes stage by stage so students i have shared a video with you all uh, which i already told you to watch before you come to this video isn't it so in that video what did you see you saw how paper was made isn't it so while making the paper you could see that there is involved there is a lot of stages involved in it so this is called manufacturing process and i'm sure you all are by now well aware that the three it did not have much value until we extracted paper from it isn't it so those who have not watched that short video which i have shared with you all kindly watch it immediately and then i'm sure you will be able to understand as to how finished products are made in the secondary sector that is in the industries all right now let us move on to the last discussion for today and that is the classification of industries so industries can be broadly classified on various types on the basis of three things First of all, raw materials, second size, and third, ownership. So first of all, let us discuss about the classification of industries on the basis of raw material. So on the basis of raw material, there are four kinds of industries. Agro-based, mineral-based, marine-based, and forest-based. So what are agro-based industries? Well, agro-based industries are those industries which use agricultural products as their raw material. Isn't it? They use plant and animal-based products as their raw material. For example, um, cotton textile industry, sugar industry, paper industry, etc. All these industries are dependent on the various agricultural products. Isn't it? Then comes mineral-based industries. So what are mineral-based industries? Mineral-based industries are those primary industries that use mineral ore. Mineral ore means mineral in their raw form. Okay, so those industries which use mineral ore as their raw material, they are called as mineral-based industries. For example, we can take uh, steel and iron industries. We can take the example of the heavy machinery industries. These are all what? These are all mineral-based industries. And the product of these industries feed many other industries. And that is why these mineral-based industries are said to be the very backbone of our economy. Next is the marine-based or the marine-based industries. So, what are marine based industries? When products from seas and oceans are used as raw materials, it is called marine based industries. For example, the seafood industry. That is an a example of marine based industry. And lastly, we have the forest based industries. So, what are forest based industries? Forest based industries are those industries which uses forest produce as raw materials for example the industries associated with forest are um, the pulp and paper the pharmaceuticals furnitures buildings etc for example softwood in india is obtained from the coniferous trees which are found in the himalayan region 
isn't it? Then again, the plyboard industries, these are all forest-based industries. All right. So these are the classification of industries on the basis of raw materials. Then we have the classification of industries on the basis of the size. So when I say size, what do I mean? When I say size, it refers to the amount of capital invested. Capital means money which is involved. The number of people who are employed and the volume of production. So when we say classification of industries on the basis of size, we generally mean three things. First of all, the amount of capital invested, the number of people employed and the volume of production. That means how big or how small production is done. So based on size, industries can be classified either as small scale industries or as large scale industries. So cottage industries or household industries are some types of small scale industry. In small scale industry, the products are manufactured by hand. By whom? By the artisans, by those people who are expert in this field. For example, we have, you all know about the village Swalkuchi in Assam, isn't it? So in this Swalkuchi, we have got many small scale industries whereby people do the you know, make the finished products, that is Mekhla Chadar, the silk Mekhla Chadar at home itself, isn't it? Then some other examples of cottage industry are basket weaving, pottery and certain handicraft materials. So small scale industries, they use very less amount of money and technology is definitely used in a very small manner or sometimes technology is not used at all if we compare it to the large-scale industries. Remember one thing, the main difference between large-scale industry and a small-scale industry is that large-scale industries produce large volume of product and small-scale industry as the name suggests, they produce small volume of product. Again, in large-scale industries, investment of capital is always higher. The use of technology is always superior if we compare it with the small-scale industry. Silk weaving, food processing, these are all small-scale industries. Again, production of automobiles, machineries, they are all large-scale industries. So students, these are the types of industries based on their size. And lastly, we have the classification of industries on the basis of who owns it. That is on the basis of ownership. So on the basis of ownership, industries can be classified as private sector industry, state or public sector industry, and joint and cooperative sector industry. So private sector industries are owned and operated by a particular industry or a group of individuals. For example, Reliance, isn't it? It is a private sector industry which is totally owned by whom? Owned by Mukesh Ambani. Next, we have the public sector industry. For example, the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and Steel Authority of India. This is an example of a public sector industry whose ownership and operation is totally under the hands of the government. No individual can come and interfere in the activities of this public sector industries. Then we have the joint sector industry and it is owned and operated by the state and the private companies together. For example, Maruti Udyog Limited. It is an example of a joint sector industry whereby private ownership and public ownership are both present. Another example is Anand Milk Union Limited and Sudha Dairy. They are all successful stories of cooperative venture. Cooperative venture means private and public. Both uh, these sectors join hands. So students, these are the various classification of industries. So these are some pictures of various industries. We have the food processing industry here. We have the heavy industry here. We have paper processing industry etc etc so these are the key words which we have dealt with today i want you all to write these down in your copy and lastly go through these questions and think about them 
and in the third period today try to write the answers of these questions and then of course continue with your studies for tomorrow thank you students meet you again 